It is either a victory for free speech or a cardinal failure of the law. Captured on film making abusive comments about Asian men, the jury concluded that BNP leader Nick Griffin's remarks did not amount to inciting racial hatred. Tonight, Chancellor Gordon Brown has ventured onto home affairs territory to warn that the law may have to be tightened to cover such remarks. Also tonight, deconstructing MI5's warning of burgeoning groups of terror plotters and the young Muslims they are grooming for suicide. From the Indian Ocean Paradise Islands of the Maldives tonight, the dictatorship that is very far from utopian and intent by some to overthrow it. They could have, after the break, visit the Maldives and experience the sunny side of life. That's what the tourist board promises. But the government's political opponents have a different story to tell. Not far from the Dutch hotels and scuba diving centres, they complain that they're harassed, arrested, and even tortured if they demonstrate against the leaders. <laughs> It's become a holiday destination favoured by the well-heeled, but away from the eyes of tourists, the government of the Maldives has been cracking down on political dissent. The opposition Democratic Party had planned a week of demonstrations, culminating today in an attempt to overthrow the government. President Mahmoud Abdul Gaoum has been in power for 28 years, and the opposition wants change, but their hopes of a peaceful revolution were quashed. From the capital, Mali, Channel 4 News has obtained exclusive pictures of the tactics used to stop this revolution. Sue Tertan has this report. But already the police are clamping down, stopping a march to the parliament in its tracks, silencing the opposition's calls to the president for change. What did you do? I didn't do anything. But these tactics are very effective, picking off people they think might cause trouble. As groups gathered outside the headquarters of the opposition party, the NDP, the roads are blocked. All who turned up to march are filmed. All the parliament uh, routes are blocked. The demonstration was supposed to be there to lobby for the parliament to change the constitution. That was what the NDP wanted. Then, under the protection of peace monitors from the UK, the opposition leader, Mohammed Nasheed, and his deputy tried to leave for the parliament building. The police waded in. Their orders were clear. As they pushed Nasheed down the street, the woman to his left, one of the party's senior activists, was dragged away. She's still in detention today on hunger strike. Yeah, there was a lot of shoving and some paper spray, but um, they are behaving rather well. Perhaps it must have something to do with your camera. By the end of the day, it was clear the government had no intention of allowing the opposition to gather momentum. President Mahmoud Abdul Gayoun has been in power for 28 years. He's recently declared a commitment to democratic reform. His foreign minister says changes are already in motion. I think things have changed very fast in this country. Amnesty's criticisms and other criticisms now are about two years old. And in that two-year period, we have been able to achieve monumental changes here. The initial criticisms led to a time when there were no political parties here. Now we do have uh, three or four parties which are very, very active. The opposition is not convinced. They want immediate changes in the constitution to allow peaceful gatherings. Protests of more than three people are illegal here without prior permission. <laughs> this video shows a midnight raid on the home of a pro-democracy activist. They dragged away his wife and two children for questioning. Such heavy-handed tactics and stories of torture are commonplace here in Mali. I was in absolute solitary confinement for 30, 35 days. I could see no one, I could hear no one. They, I, I did not know when, when the day turned to night and night turned to day. It's a far cry from the brochure pictures of this holiday paradise, from the honeymoon suites and scuba dive centres, a travel industry that accounts for a third of the island's economy, improving the country's GDP and filling up the state's coffers. But most of the nation's 300,000 mostly Sunni Muslims who live in the island's crowded slum dwellings have seen none of the benefits. The 
next day, the second of their planned week of protest, the riot police are back in force, sweeping through the streets, moving everyone on. It leaves those people who believe change was about to happen demoralised. If we want freedom, that's the things that we want right now. So they don't want people to demonstrate, they won't show the world that this country is peaceful. The opposition today abandoned plans for a peaceful revolution, afraid it would end in bloodshed. But in spite of a promise to bring democracy to these islands, it's clear President Gayoum is far from ready to accept any protest against his regime. Sue Turton reporting. Now, Kathy Newman at Westminster. We're back tomorrow, five past six. Till then, from Dasha and from me, that's Channel 4 News. Have a good weekend.